there are three different aspects of initiation or becoming an initiate. In one of these, what is actually being illuminated begins with the thinking process, with actually knowing about non-physical realities, knowing about the greater spiritual realities that we come from, and the spiritual depths of oneself. This is linked to the spiritual centers inside the head. And this is also linked to the illumination of the thinking process, so that with this process we actually know consciously the structure of the spiritual worlds, how we interact with them, how they influence us on a daily basis. In this path of illumination, we find that everything is a thought form from the mind of God, and all those thought forms have a pattern to them. And the current term that we use for understanding those patterns is sacred geometry. So sacred geometry is a universal science for understanding the patterns of creation at every level whether it's how the different spiritual are constructed, or different ranks of spiritual beings and their consciousness, or the different subtle bodies of a human being, whatever it claims, is a pattern to it. And so no matter what tradition you study with, they will work with sacred geometry. Because the sacred geometry at the highest level is a pure, packed thought form from the mind of God that shows you the pure pattern of everything that's manifested from it. Now the next level is that of the clairvoyant. And from one perspective, we could say this is linked to the illumination of the heart and the feeling life. The Rosicrucians talk about a process in, within an initiation in which at a certain point, when the heart becomes open and unarmored, and we cultivate this feeling of unconditional love, there is a ignition of a kind of spiritual spark within the heart. And what happens then is that they describe it as an etheric rose light arises from the heart and moves up to what's commonly called the third eye center. And with that rose etheric stream, it enters into the centers in the head, that area that is technically at the third ventricle of the brain and was known as the cave of Brahma in the Indian teachings. This is a particular area that's open in the head that has a space between the pineal and pituitary glands. And as this space becomes illuminated, it leads to direct spiritual vision. This is then a clairvoyant. The clairvoyant can actually perceive non-physical realities. But depending upon the individual, they may not consciously understand the structures or discern the different things that they are actually seeing. And again, they might be different from some of the other stages that we'll talk about in a moment. So the third aspect here is that there's also the cultivation of action or of the will. And this is linked to the belly, or what in Japan they call the hara, or in Chinese alchemy, they call the lower dantian, the lower will centers here. And through the action or willing form of illumination, one is able to take action esoterically. You're able to actually use non-physical realities to change things on the physical plane. Now, at the most extreme form of this, we have things like actual physical alchemy and a transmutation of one physical substance to another. But this is usually attained after going through multiple steps of being able to transform something that is less dense. And that is normally uh, etheric energy fields. So the actual vibrational transformation of energy fields, energy healing, things of that kind, is something that you find very strongly on this path. So the person that can actually transform things using spiritual forces is referred to as the adept. Now again, this is kind of an ideal type of the different aspects of initiation or initiates, often people have different parts of this in their own particular configuration and are stronger in one aspect or another.